Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So we say the Lord, he's going to scatter the Israelites amongst all people. Go ahead. From one end of the earth, even unto another. Uh -huh. And there thou shalt serve other gods. So he knew once he scattered us, that we would be in all kind of mix and different, all kind of religions. Stuff like Christianity or whatever. Catholic, Catholic, stuff like that. He knew that we were going to do that. So that's why we say when we scattered to all, all the land, we still will have to keep the law. Go ahead and read that. Now. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. So you were saying what Christ was saying. So we, we think, Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Christ was saying he didn't come to destroy, but fulfill. Go to Acts 3 and 18. Let's see what he's talking about. What did Christ come to fulfill? Acts chapter 3, yeah. verse 18. 50, 50 Acts chapter 3 verse 18 uh -huh. But those things, yeah, those things Which God before uh -huh. Had showed by the mouth of all his prophets uh -huh. That Christ should suffer That Christ should do what? Suffer He should suffer uh -huh. He have so fulfilled So he so fulfilled that In Matthew 5 When he said I didn't come to destroy But fulfill He fulfilled the suffering Like when he was on the cross When they stabbed him in the vinegar they, they didn't break the name, stuff like that. He had to break, the, you know, stuff like that. He had to fulfill. He had to fulfill his suffering. Give me Luke chapter twenty-one, verse fifty-twenty. Read that real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter sixty-six, verse twelve. Uh -huh. For thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. Behold, I will extend peace Hold to. On, 50 and 12. 60. Let's see if Christ fulfilled it. Isaiah chapter sixty, verse twelve. Start at verse four. Verse fourteen. The sons also of them that I'll afflicted. Isaiah 66, verse 15. Right. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. So this we know that Christ didn't fulfill this. Go ahead. And with his chariots like a whirlwind mm -hmm. to render his anger with fury. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Uh -huh. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Uh -huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So we know Christ ain't fulfilled that yet. We know that's the future prophet. So when he say Christ came to fulfill the law, he didn't fulfill everything in the law. That's why he said, go back to Matthew 5 and 17. That's why he said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but fulfill. Then he's going to expound on it more. Start at 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. till heaven and earth pass. The heaven and earth pass, but heaven is still on earth, right? Go ahead. One jot or one tittle shall no, in no wise 
pass from the law. Right, nothing shall pass from the law. Till what? Till all be fulfilled. Till what? Till all be fulfilled. Like we just read the second coming. That part hasn't been fulfilled. So he said we still got to keep those laws for everything be fulfilled. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments uh -huh. and shall teach men so, uh -huh. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Be called what? The least in the kingdom of heaven. Read on. But, but whosoever shall do and teach them. So whoever shall teach the law, the commandments, go ahead. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right, he's going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So that's why we say we, we try to keep the law to the best of our ability. You know, because once we start keeping the laws, crime go down, homosexuality go down, uh, men be husbands, we you know how to raise our children. Things start being in the right order. Right. So when, right. when people tell us, don't keep God's laws, so now you want to say you want this place to be wicked and this place to be destroyed and you want people to be adulterers and fornicators and stuff like that. That's why we promote it on the school. Law because even like in the kingdom of heaven, I'm gonna show you in the kingdom of heaven, we still gonna be keeping the law. I, I hope one day I'll be as good as some of you guys. I feel like right now I've just been teaching on it. I'm gonna show you something. Watch this. We need uh, Zachariah, I think it's 8 and 22. I'm gonna show you something because you see how, like, uh, give me Romans chapter 2 verse. A lot of people, what they try to do. They try to um, they try to take the Hebrews out of the equation, right? They can't do that. I'm telling you, you can't do that. Watch it. Read that. The Book of Romans, chapter three, verse one. Uh -huh. What advantage then hath he? Excuse me. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? So it say, what profit for to be a Jew? Because the so-called black. In Hispanic, we the real Jews, and we can prove it in the Bible because the Bible said the real Israelites would be under curses, and one of the curses is they would go into slavery on slave ships, and we fit the prophecy all of the curses. We say that's why we got these signs. If y'all see why we got these signs, say we would go into slavery on ships. We would be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Our sons and daughters would be given into another people. The Bible said that we would become. We would be like a uh, uh, majority of us would be in jail or in prison houses. So we fit all the curses that the Bible said that the Hebrew would be going through in the last day. That's why we say the people that's in Israel, they don't fit none of these curses. Because if you think about it, the people, the Jews, they own everything. They own the banking, corporations, they own the movies, the TV, the rap ladies, they own everything. So yeah, they don't fit no curses. But the Bible that says that, that the Israelites would have no might or no power in their hand. They, they would have no economical might or no military might. So we just didn't wake up one day and say, hey, we the real Jews or we the real Israelites. We started reading the Bible and say, damn, this sound like this happening to me. This sound like this happening to my family. This sound like, uh, it was saying, I'm going to like read a curse for y'all. Give me um, that Deuteronomy 28. Where it say, um, it says sons and daughters. Give me 32. But we know like when you read 68, you say the Israelites were going to slavery by ship. So we fit that. We fit all the curtain. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Uh -huh. Thou mm -hmm. sons and our daughters. So if you look at this sign right here, say the sons and the daughters. Go ahead. Shall be given unto another people. Uh -huh. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. Right, because in slavery, our sons and daughters in slavery was given into other people. And we had, we, we was looking for our kids. We couldn't get them back because they were still you to Virginia, and they would sell like your sons and daughters, maybe off to like Florida somewhere, right? Go ahead. And there shall be no might in their hands. So we had no might in our hand to get our kids back. That's one of the curses that we fit by going in the slave. Right, so read that again. Romans chapter three, verse one. Uh -huh. What advantage then have the Jew? So the Bible said, what advantage of us being a Jew? That's why when you see like, we can go to scriptures and we can, uh, we can break them down or expound on, right? Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Uh -huh. Much in every way. What? Much in every way. Uh -huh. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So the oracles of God was given to the Jews. 
what it means like the Bible or the understanding or the breaking down of the Bible was given to us. And even the Daniel said it, he said in the last day that knowledge was going to increase. Like some things we don't truly have a full understanding, but more and more we study, the more knowledge it increased to us. Give me Zechariah real quick. You got that? 823. Go ahead. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. in those days. In those days. So this is talking about like now. Go ahead. It shall come to pass. So future. Because we're waking up now as the real Jews. Go ahead. That ten men. That what? That ten men uh -huh. shall take hold out of all languages. That means all the nations. Go ahead. Of the nations. Uh -huh. Even shall take hold of the skirts of him that is a Jew. So that means all the nations will have to take hold of the skirt of a Jew. They will have to come and learn from us. That's what the Bible is saying. That ain't our interpretation of the scripture. That's why when we people come up and we ask all the people, are y'all willing to come learn from us? Some people say, no, 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 no. We don't want to learn from y'all, but... When you do that, you ain't obeying what the Bible says. It say that, that all the nations will have to take the skirt for him that with him. You even know that Christ said that in John 4, 22, said, y'all do not what y'all worship because salvation is But give me Isaiah 2 and 2. I'm going to show you something real quick. What happened to the nations when they come and follow the real Jews? That's on your, is that a watch right there? Oh, the Ten Commandments. Give me Isaiah 2, 2, and 2. Once all the nations come and, and follow up, because y'all know the, the Bible is about order, right? Because you got Christ, you got the Most High, you got Christ, you got the disciples, right? And then under the disciples, you got the chosen people of Israel, you got God's people, right? According to Revelation chapter 7, right? Watch this. The book of Isaiah. Isaiah 66, 26. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass. So it's still talked about in the future, right? Go ahead. In the last days. In the last days. We're talking about the last days. Go ahead. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. That's what's going on today. The Lord is establishing his kingdom now with his people, with the true Israelite, the true Jews. Right, in the top of the mountains, uh -huh. and it shall be exalted above the hills, uh -huh. and all nations, Who? all nations, Who? all nations, all nations, what? shall flow unto it. Uh -huh. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, uh -huh. the house of the God of Jacob, uh -huh. and he will teach us of his ways. See there, the house of Jacob is the house of Israel. He will teach us. We would teach uh, society the ways of the Lord. Because we're the real Jews. That's what the Bible says. Keep on. And we will walk in his path. Uh -huh. For out of Zion uh -huh. shall go forth the law uh -huh. and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares uh -huh. and their spears into bru pruning hooks. Uh -huh. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Right. That's why we out here. We're trying to teach people. When everybody come back and follow the true order of the Bible, y'all ain't gonna see no wars and rumors of war, but we we here to put everything back and stab beside the Lord how he had it in the beginning through his chosen people. Do his people. Uh, I wonder why. Right. Do you guys have the scriptures memorized? Yeah, like we read the scriptures. Though. We have the oracle. God give us the oracles of God. Where we can, we can, we know the Bible. We can break this thing I'm down right. left and right, back and forth, and we have the right interpretation because we are chosen people. We are God's chosen people. We're the Israelites. He giving us the knowledge where we can break it down. Right. I'll try to remember that way we can. All right, right, right. All right, man. We're going to continue with the word. Somebody give me Obadiah real quick. See that? Like we do on these cameras. Y'all think like we just got to bash everybody every time. You're going to get these either mics. Our day going to come. 
I just to say, so y'all don't be fooled by this damn oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, and sometimes we gotta reel these Mormons in. We gotta reel them in and be nice with them. Yeah. Because if we don't be nice with them, they won't come up and talk to them. Yeah. So we gotta be nice to them, you know. We gotta we gotta do them, treat them right. And then at the end of the day, we're gonna take this pole and pop them upside the damn head. <laughs> yeah. Climb your ass up in that damn tree and go get them coconut. That's right, all right. right. So don't be fooled by this damn tape because y'all can watch the tape where we bash these damn needle mics. You gotta really me and sometimes be nice with them. Let them be our little friend. They say we're gonna give them a hug and a kiss. But so somebody read Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 12. We're gonna beat these damn needle mics up. they not getting off. The wicked shall not escape God's judgment. That's right. The right? book of Obadiah chapter 1 verse 12 read. But thou should not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Right. Thou should not look upon them. Right. Go ahead. Neither should have thou rejoiced over the children of Judah. Right. They shouldn't have rejoiced over us, man. Done. They should rejoiced over us. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter 30, 35. I think it's five. Hold that with you guys. These so-called Edomites, they rejoiced over us. But you know what? They try to be your friend, but deep down in their mind, they can't, they don't like you. They really don't. They're on recon right now. Right. We got them all built up. They floating on cloud nine right now. They floating on cloud nine. Right? 35 and 5, I believe. What does that say? Yep, read that. Ezekiel, <laughs> chapter 35 and verse 5. Read. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. These so-called Edomites, they got a perpetual hatred towards us, right? And has shed the blood of the children of Israel. They did what? Shed the blood of the children of Israel. They shed the blood of the so-called Israelites, right? Go ahead. By the force of the sword. By the what? By the force of the sword. By the force of their sword. When you look at these signs, look at this guy with the beaten back. They whipped us to death, right? They tortured our people with yokes of iron on us. They oppressing our people today. Right, go ahead. In the time of their calamity. Uh-huh. In the, in the time that their iniquities had in. Uh-huh. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, uh -huh. I will prepare thee unto blood. They're going to prepare them for what? Unto blood. They're going to prepare them for blood. Right? Now let me read Obadiah again. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 12. Uh -huh. But thou should have not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. They shouldn't have never did that. Because when we was traveling, going through land through land, right, they was laughing upon us, right? Go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah. Right, they rejoice over us, man, in our calamities, right? Go ahead. In the day of their destruction. Right, uh-huh. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Right, they spoke proudly on us in our day of distress. Bring it out, huh? Proudly on us, man. Right, go ahead. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Uh-huh. Shouldest not have looked on their Affliction in the day of their calamity. Right, they looked on our affliction, man, when we was going through our worst times. Right, go ahead. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Right, go ahead. Neither shouldst thou have stood in the crossway to these damn heathens. That's man. right. It's near. Right, but the Bible is for all mankind. We obey the Bible. We obey the Bible. Right? We obey the Bible. We ain't got to argue with these, with these damn uh, uh, Mormons. We ain't got to yell at them. We ain't got to tell them to bow down. They ain't going to do it anyway. They ain't going to accept that they, they're not going to do it. Right? Continually, yay. Down, and they shall be as they had not, had not been. Uh-huh. Jump to verse 18. Verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, uh -huh. and the house of Joseph a flame, uh -huh. and the house of Esau for... Hallelujah. 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 Right? right? Right. No more remaining of them, man. We ain't going to have to be worried about being oppressed, because there ain't going to be no more of them remaining. They're going to be uh, uh, oppressing us in the kingdom, man. They're going to have to beat their plowshares, like you said in Isaiah. <laughs> They're yeah. going to come up and worship, but they're going to beat their plowshares, man. They're going to be no more war after they kill and destroy each other. That's what's...
with fierce rebuke. With what? With a fierce rebuke. Uh-huh. And they